Big Mike, and Hayes Entertainment here. This episode, we got on three Sarnia Sting, Benny Goudreau, Jacob Perot, and Jameson Reese. A couple of good Canadian kids. If you like what we're doing, hit that subscribe button. Here we go, folks. Brian Hayes oh. and Big Mike. <laughs> I, 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 never stop. I only touch greatness podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone knows a good prospect, it's Vancouver's mini Don Cherry. <laughs> Let's go crazy! He only touches greatness. Only Touch Greatness podcast yeah. with Ryan Hayes oh, and Big Mike. Good, we are Chris, going can everyone hear me? Yeah, I Awesome. Hey guys, well, I just want to thank you guys very much for coming on today. Really appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, no problem. I got a partner with me today. I got uh, Mini Don Cherry here. Hey. <laughs> hey, good Canadian kids. <laughs> you, look you, look good. Good. you look good. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, no problem. I'm just going to uh, shoot you guys a bunch of questions. Sounds good. Um, so, we'll, we'll start off with that. Uh, we'll just go for the questions we ask for everyone. Let's just start with Jacob, Jameson, and then we'll go Ben, just because that's the order of the screen here. Sounds good. Uh, what, made you guys, what made you get into hockey in the first place, and did you guys play any other sports growing up? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously with my dad playing hockey, it was pretty much a, the big picture in, in my family. So that's pretty much where I started. I can't even remember when I first put on skates. So I'd say from there. And then I used to play uh, box lacrosse in the summer. And uh, yeah, I have stopped playing that like two years ago. Besides that, not really any other sports. You play box lacrosse? Yeah, I still play. I love lacrosse. Yeah, I love it. It's so fun. For me, I, uh, I started uh, probably when I was around – Two or three, I was walking around in my house, uh, just wearing skates, just getting used to them. My dad was renovating the house, so yeah, just let me walk around, and that's when I started to sort of get into it. And then by uh, three or four, I was playing a house league, and that's when it all started for me. And then as I uh, grew up, I played a little bit of box lacrosse, like Jacob, uh, uh, and then I switched over and played soccer for a year. And then that was probably when I was, I gotta say, eleven or twelve. And then after that, I just uh, focus on hockey after that. You guys have a uh, Sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, for me, it was my dad and mom just kind of put me in it. Uh, I switched over to goalie because uh, they needed me around five. And then I've been kind of goalie since then. Uh, just kind of started, I guess, picking it up and playing like rep and stuff probably around 10, I'd say. I guess it's kind of when it starts off. But uh, other sports, I played soccer pretty much all the way up. Uh, and then some school stuff too, but yeah, mainly just soccer and hockey. Uh, why do you wear number seven, Benny? Uh, it was kind of like almost a fluke, I guess. I kind of wore it for like a summer team. Uh, we ended up winning the entire tournament, so I just kind of stuck with it and it's worked out so far. So just kind of kept going with it. Yeah, I like it. It's unique for a goal. Yeah. Especially. <laughs> Uh, Jameson, why do you wear 39? 
Uh, I grew up uh, loving 19. Uh, Joe Sackick was my favorite player. And then uh, when I came to Sarnia, 19 was taken. Um, so my dad wore number three as when he played. So I threw them together and got 39. Nice. Yeah, you got the goalie number. Yeah. <laughs> and Jacob, why do you wear 44? Yeah, I mean, same for me. My dad, uh, he wore it half his career in the, in the NHL. So I just, you know, I just started wearing it when I was a kid and been wearing it ever, ever since. What's your favorite sports movie? Um, I like uh, I like Draft Day. I saw it a couple of years ago and thought it was pretty pretty fun to watch. Jameson, um, obviously the uh, Michael Jordan series is pretty good, but uh, I, I like Moneyball. I think it's a really good movie. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah, I think I have to agree with James. I just kind of watched that the other day, actually, and it's I found it pretty cool and interesting. So uh, I'd say that for sure. Definitely the analytics and that makes you start to wonder about stuff and just the way it all comes out. That's, and that's a true story as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Who are you guys' biggest influencers in your career? Um, I mean, growing up in Chicago, I've, I've always watched Patrick Kane. He's been uh, – been one of the guys I've watched my my whole life and you know he's, he's been a big role model for me and uh you know my my parents they do so much for me so uh you know I wouldn't be where I am in hockey if if it wasn't for them um for me I would definitely have to say my dad obviously he got me into hockey and then basically helped me all the way and then still does to this day and, and I wouldn't be here where I am without him so yeah, I'd have to say my parents as well. Um, when it comes to, like, the hockey side of things, I'd have to say, like, Carey Price probably. I'd just be able to watch him and kind of try to mimic what he does in the net. Uh, yeah, I'd have to say that for sure. Jameson, who do you mirror your game after since I already heard Jacobs and uh, Ben's? Um, if I had to pick a player that I mirror my game after, uh, didn't really know this before I came into the OHL, but when I got there, a lot of the boys told me that I played, like, connect me. So if I have to – if I had to pick a player, that's the player I'd pick. Not a bad player. No, he's a good one, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. He's a stud. <clears throat> um, Jacob, what was the feeling of being drafted 19th overall to Sarnia, and where were you? Uh, yeah, I was actually playing a game for the, for the Chicago Mission. It was our Nationals, so I didn't know until after the game. But, yeah, it was, it was really fun to hear uh, David Leguan. Uh, I know him pretty well since my dad played with him. So it was good to hear where I was going. Uh, I, knew, I knew him, so... You know, it was it was really exciting. And Benny, what was the feeling of being dropped in seventh overall this thing? And where were you? Uh, I was actually in a hotel room. We were playing middle of OHFs. Um, so I had a bunch of guys around me too. Uh, so it was really awesome getting to kind of have that feeling, share it with them. Uh, and like Jacob said, my agent's pretty close with uh, Leguan. So I kind of grew up knew, knowing him a little bit. So it was good to kind of go somewhere where I knew people and then uh, Jacob pretty much texted me like uh, right after draft day and we started talking. So, yeah. Awesome. And Jameson, how about you? Ninth overall. I know it's a couple years back now, but. Uh... Yeah, it was uh, obviously a big day in my career, but uh, I was uh, at home uh, with one of my good buddies, Ryan Dugas, who uh, is a goalie and now plays for Kingston, who was also uh, taken fourth round to Kingston. But uh, that's where I was. I was at home with him. Right on. And uh, do you have a favorite sports quote? Oh, man, all of you? One sec. <laughs> I got one for sure. I mean, I don't, I don't really go. Like, the only one I know is you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. <laughs> That's yeah. True. That's true. Gretzky said That's that. Gretzky. Yep. yep. That's how I do my date in life. <laughs> um. I can't, I can't find the, the quote, but I would say just to give you a gist of it, just work hard and, and, and stay humble, I think, is, is the biggest thing for me. And that's, that's, that's a quote that I, I love. Yeah, I'd have to kind of agree with him there. I mean, kind of, I guess the moral of hockey is kind of based off of that. So I'd say just kind of following those things. And, uh, yeah, I'm not too sure about a quote, I guess. So something kind of along those lines. That's okay. That's okay. That's everything. Uh, my favorite one is the you can't outbeat you if they can't outwork you. Uh, 
you, that's you a work, good one for sure. Yeah, I mean, if you work hard, you get anything you want. What color is your stick tapes? I, I, like I use white. White. There you go. Yeah, I uh, I go white up top and on the bottom as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm white as well. See, I was I'm all white as well, and uh, we just had the last guests on that they were all black. So I, I one time I'll tell this story. One time I had a stick taped in white, and I drew I traced the puck with the, and I colored it in with a sharpie in my beer league, so it looked like I had three pucks on my stick. <laughs> So just to, just to throw the goalies off a little. Yeah, might have to try that. Yeah. What was the biggest jump to the queue for uh, Let's Go Jacob and Ben? Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, uh, geez, uh, I, I guess our first game, I think, uh, you no, know, it was really, really good to have some some good teammates. I mean, obviously, as a 16 year old, I was really. I was really nervous before my first game, but I just remember a couple guys just coming up to me, giving me a pat on the shin pads and just, you know, telling me to be myself, play my game, and, and it'll be all right. And uh, I went pretty well from there. And then he went out and scored two goals. <laughs> uh, for me, yeah, I would just say that the, the speed and the strength of the older guys, I mean, obviously – I'm getting to be a little bit of an old guy in the league now, but I, I would say for the young guys coming to the league, just just to work hard all summer and, and, and get as strong as you can because it's a big difference. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I mean, I think just like how hard you got to work to be at that next level. I mean, I was out with injury for the first little bit, but uh, like I had to, the whole summer, I was basically just rehabbing an injury and then started the season, I was having to rehab the injury still. It was just working kind of, to get that done and then getting in the first game, like Jacob said, uh, I was like really nerve wracking going into that one. So uh, I think it was good just to get that one out of the way and just keep going. What was Carolina's uh, development, development camp. camp like? Yeah, uh, Rob Brendamore is a little bit of a beast when it comes to the gym work, so he expects nothing less than that. So it was definitely tough. Uh, had a nice bike test where uh, you got to go a mile on the assault bike in under a minute and then you get three minutes off and then you got to do it again um, <laughs> at a dev camp i uh spilled my beans a little bit after that one i i believe it he's he's still jacked man he is hey jameson uh you had an incredible year this year putting up 61 points in 39 games uh what was the biggest difference from the seasons prior obviously other than just being one year older i mean just confidence like obviously in my first year we had a really strong team and it was hard for me to stay in the lineup full time. And even since then, that's been an issue, but uh, playing full time and, and, and getting regular shifts uh, definitely, definitely goes a long way for confidence. So if I had to pick something that's definitely changed over the past three years, I would say that's it. That's it. You just had the one five game suspension, correct? Or am I wrong on my stats? You are 100% wrong. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I had no idea. At the end of my second year, uh, close to the end, I guess, I uh, had an eight gamer. And then this year, I had two sixes. Oh, the six is nice. Nice. Are we yeah. able to find that footage on uh, YouTube? <laughs> yeah, it's all over the place. <laughs> we'll have to drop that in right here. <laughs> uh, Jacob, you had an awesome year. Um, putting up 39 goals, 31 assists, 70 points in 57 games. Um, after putting up 55 in your rookie season, what were the biggest differences or changes you made in your game? Yeah, I think uh, Jameson just said it, the confidence that, that really plays a huge role. So just coming to my second season, I, I had a lot more confidence than I did my first year. And, you know, I think, uh, I think just with that, it really, it really helps. And even just uh, coming in next year, that's what I just want to keep getting more and more confident and just, you know, do whatever it takes uh, to help the team win. Benny, you had a great rookie year. Um, 890 save percentage, putting up 10 wins, and he got an assist. Got your first W in your first game uh, against the Barry Colts. Pretty impressive. Do you still got that puck? Yeah, I do. It's actually um, just over my closet in my room right now. Awesome, uh, awesome. Jacob, yeah. must be unique having such a hockey family and your father being an NHL vet, um, Yannick Pro. What things has he taught you? Ever feel the pressure of it? Um, I don't really have any pressure. I mean, I think uh, it's good to have him by my side and tell me, you know, in, and guide me through, through his footstep. He's, he's been through it. He knows how, what it takes to get to the next level. So I'd say I just use, use it as my advantage and uh, use him as much as I can. Uh, what's it like being coached by an NHL vet like Darren Hatcher? You guys must learn a lot off the ice and on the ice. Yeah, I mean, uh, 
we have Darren Hatcher, we got David Leguan, Brad Stobitz, uh, you know, they have all played in the NHL. So it's really good to have them and, you know, have, have some guys that know what they're doing and they can teach you and, you know, do whatever they, they need to do to help you be, uh, become a better player. Yeah, I would agree with that. Obviously, uh, Hatch was a defenseman in the NHL, but uh, he still helps out a lot. Um, and uh, I know for me and Jacob, uh, Leggy spends a lot of time with us working on skills and stuff like that. So it's, that's, I would say that's huge for us. Yeah, I mean, even for me, uh, obviously I don't deal too much with the coaches, but like Brad Stobb, it's in the gym. I think it's just kind of like learning how hard to work and how hard you got to work to make the next level. And I think they kind of show you how to do that. So uh, I think just having them there kind of gives you the experience that you need just to make that next step. You guys have a favorite road barn? Um, Benny, you want to go first on this one? Um, I think Windsor probably. I played well against Windsor this year, so I'd probably have to say them. Okay. Um, I'll go. I'll go with Hamilton. I think uh, the one yeah. game I played there, I, I played pretty well, so it kind of kind of boosts uh, the question for for being my favorite. But you know, I I, I really like playing in front of those uh, in front of that uh, in that big rink. Yep. For me, I, I'd probably have to say. Uh, London, just because the type of style player I am, Gritty, I, I, I love uh, I love playing against London, and uh, it always gets heated, and they always got their fans That's cheering true. against you, so it gets me going a little bit. Yeah, that's those Hunter teams. Hey, Benny, what was the feeling of putting on the Maple Leaf and representing your country at the U-17s? Uh, it was awesome. It didn't go the way I wanted, I guess, but uh, it was kind of an honor just to get that first little look of experience on it. Um, Obviously, it would have been nice for the Alenka to happen this year. But uh, kind of moving forward on that one and just hoping for the best. And hoping next year, maybe see if I can make the World Juniors. So I think that was a great experience, kind of getting in and getting to kind of know the system and how they work. So, Jacob, what was the feeling to put on the Maple Leaf for you and representing your country at the U-17s? And you definitely should have been on the U-18 team. So we're not going to talk about that, though. Yeah, well, thank you, first of all. And, you know, I think it was, it was, it was an honor. It was really fun. Um, we had a really good team, made some good friends there. And um, yeah, I think, uh, I think we all played our best and obviously we didn't, we didn't win the, the gold, but we played really well. Uh, Jameson, same question to you. What was the feeling of representing Canada, U-17s, winning the gold at the Helenka Gretzky? And then unfortunately you got snubbed too, man. That's uh, brutal. We talked to Perfetti last night and same thing with him. It's like, really? You two and Jet Wu should have been shoe-ins. Like that was in my eyes anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was the feeling? I mean, it was obviously awesome, especially uh, at my U18 uh, tournament. Uh, U17s, it's, it's it's definitely tougher for a Canada team to win because there's three of us split into three equal teams. So, but uh, at the Holenka, was definitely good, and, and especially being in hometown and uh, or uh, having home ice advantage in Edmonton was definitely huge. And uh, as much as uh, this year's trials didn't go as uh, planned. I, I still got one more shot, and it, it'll be back at Edmonton uh, in uh, December. So, big hopes for that one. Yeah, I was just going to say, Jacob and Jameson, congrats on being named to the World Junior Camp this year, guys. Um, hoping you. we can both see you guys uh, wearing the Maple Leaf and cheering you guys on. It's our favorite tournament to watch. We, Definitely. We all get together, and that's, like, the biggest thing, man. To me, it's the biggest tournament there is in hockey. Yeah, yeah I would agree yeah. on that, especially as – young kid like obviously it's it's the dream and and to be able to have a shot to make that team is huge and i'm going to make the most of it so yeah definitely yeah. go ahead yeah what what jameson said and you know i think it'd be even more fun to you know play together on the same team so you know let's hope for the best and see what happens hey benny how many times do you get asked if you're related to johnny hockey a uh, lot yeah <laughs> like it happens a lot especially growing up when he first kind of burst into the scene and everyone was kind of starting to hear about him, it was like almost everywhere I went. So yeah. I had to uh, throw that in there because I'm like, I'm sure he gets asked that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jameson, what was the feeling again? Drafted second round, 44th overall in the draft last year in Vancouver. Uh, actually, we met there. Us two yeah. both met you there. He wasn't dressed like this, but we met you in the draft. You're an absolute beauty. That's how I know you were there. So, uh, yeah, were you caught off guard by the hurricane selection or did they show interest the whole time? Um, yeah, they, sh they showed some interest. I talked to, I talked to them for sure. Um, 
if I, if I had to pick a team going into the draft, the, that's the team that would tra- draft me. Uh, it definitely wouldn't have been them, but um, I'm happy where I am and, and obviously uh, have lots of work to improve on, but hopefully that, that it'll, that'll, be, uh, that'll work out one day. Do you guys have any pregame meals or rituals? Yeah, I mean, I try to eat the same thing every every pregame. Like if it's uh, if it's an early game, I I usually go to to this breakfast place and get the same thing. And if not, um, I usually just get like uh, uh, chicken and pasta or something like that, and uh, just go to the game. And I like to stick handle before just to get my hands going. Uh, usually for me, we have to be at the rank at eleven o'clock or ten thirty, and I'm usually home by. 11, 11.30, depending on when we have to be at the rink. But uh, I usually just chill out for a bit. And if uh, I'm at a stage in my life where I really like video games, then uh, I'll have to have a good game before I before I get off and take my uh, hour to hour and a half nap. Uh, and for me, it usually switches up every day. It just depends what I'm feeling. Um, and I'm usually, if it's a 7 o'clock game, I'll be at the rink for, for 4, 4.30. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'd say for a meal, I'm a big chicken and, like, uh, pasta guy, like Jacob was saying there and Jameson. But uh, for pregame stuff, I go on all day. I mean, I'm a goalie, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm off of it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, one more thing for me, uh, I'm a big skate guard guy, and I can't take my skates, skate guards off, and I can't let my blades touch the ground until it's time to walk out for warm-ups. Yeah, me too. I'm the same way, man. My people, yeah. my, and I, I'm like, I, I put my pants on after my skates. Yeah, same. I, I, yeah, I stepped through and my people, my, everybody on my team's like, what are you doing? Yeah. But it makes it easier to tie your skates when you don't have the pants on. I have uh, lots of stuff that switches up, but I would say that's, that's one that will always be there. Yeah. We interviewed a kid from the dub and uh, one of his answers was for the weird stuff was uh, he puts his uh, leg pads on opposite legs. So his left leg pad goes on his right and vice versa. That's very weird. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how comfortable that is, but uh, yeah, he said it, what you got to do. Yeah. He said it started back when he was a kid that he accidentally put him on the wrong leg <laughs> one day and he, and he just never went back. That's funny. It's got to be different with shot blocking, though, I feel. <laughs> For sure. Uh, Jacob and Jameson, where do you get your high hockey, hockey IQ from and skill from? Do you guys watch a lot of hockey? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I've been in Chicago for, for about six or seven years now, and I've been going to the, the Blackhawks game for so long now, and I got the chance to watch Kane and Panera and Taze, all those guys, and I think that they kind of picked up there. And uh, I, I always do some skills in the basement with my dad. We have a, a shooting tarp and a place to do some, some stick handling. So just, uh, you know, a lot of practice of that. And it really, really helps me come onto the ice. Um, for me, uh, when I was younger, uh, all I wanted in my basement was a, was a hockey rink. So uh, one Christmas, I think I was probably six or seven. My dad pretty much built as, as close to a hockey rink uh, as you can get without actually putting ice in it. So uh, we were down there a lot learning and he was teaching me a bunch of stuff. And there's also uh, an air hockey table that uh, he uh, got from a buddy and he put it up on the wall. And we did a lot of like just, just asking me questions where I go in certain situations, depending on where the puck is and stuff like that. So I think that's where I learned uh, a lot of a lot of my hockey knowledge. Okay, this question is for all three of you. What would we find in your iPod or what kind of music do you listen to? And is it before the game? Is it the whole team, or is it just one? You got your earbuds in. Yeah, I'm. I'm a big country guy. Uh, Luke Combs. Uh, yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love to listen to that. And then uh, before games, uh, I like to switch it up sometimes. If uh, you know, I, I want to be a little more casual. I'll listen to some, some country and just you know relax before the game, or if I want to get. Uh, get you know hyped up uh i got uh ethan langman he likes rock so i get him to, to send me his playlist uh and then uh it really depends uh if i listen to my own music or or the speaker in the locker room it depends how i feel so i'm not i'm not too superstitious about that yeah for me i, I would i would agree on that and obviously away from hockey i love my country music but uh it just depends on the mood i'm in and uh, i got my own Beats headphones, but sometimes I'll listen to the speaker. It just depends how I'm feeling before the game and, and what I think is best for me. 
Yeah, I'd have to say I'm another country guy away from hockey. Um, at the rink, it's kind of, I got a hockey player, so it has like a bunch of like rap and everything on it. Yeah. Uh, it just kind of gets me fired up into the game. But uh, just like Jameson, like sometimes I'll listen to the team music. Um, but like the second I leave, I have my own headset that I put on and kind of focus in on my own music there. Who's the team DJ? Brandon Guy, probably. I would say he'll take over pretty much next year. He's got a SoundCloud with some pretty good, uh, some pretty good remixes there that uh, I know will get the boys going. So, hey Benny, where do you get your high hockey IQ from? Your agility and your very good positioning. I mean, I think for me, uh, growing up in North Bay, I had this one goalie coach that just kind of helped me all the way up. So it was always the same message that was kind of in my head. Uh, so it just kind of allowed me to focus on like really hard on everything, and I was always around hockey. Uh, he coached like the junior teams in North Bay. So I was always kind of watching other goalies, uh, training with Ken Appleby um, and Colton Point and stuff like that. So I've always been around like high-end hockey and it just kind of, I guess, followed in and kind of I've adapted to it and had to kind of get used to it or it wasn't going to go my way. So, yeah. Uh, Benny, one game sticks out to me. I'm sure you remember it well. Your 60 game, 60 save performance against the Windsor Spitfires. Yeah, it was it was pretty fun. I mean, uh, and see his shots going up. I guess it just kind of gets you into it more. Um, like, you can, like I guess some guys don't like it. Uh, but like, there's a lot of backlash, I guess, from it. But at the end of the day, like I'd rather have 40, 50 shots than take like 10 shots a game. Um, much more likely to let like a little fluffy one in on 10 shots than if I'm just kind of in the game taking 40 shots a game. So, uh, yeah, it was a pretty fun game to play in. Um, stayed in it for sure. Um, but, yeah. You guys play any fantasy sports? Now the good questions. Um, I don't. Uh, I, I don't really have time for that uh, during the season, so I just stay away from it and just try to focus on, on my, my own hockey and my own games. Um, I guess I do a little bit, usually start off the year, and have a nice fantasy draft and pick my team. But <laughs> after a couple of weeks, it, uh, it doesn't really, I don't play into it as much switching my bench every day and stuff like that. So I guess I do, but nothing ever really comes from it. <laughs> but yeah, you're, you're the, you're the guy I hear everybody else talking about that plays a couple of weeks and then gives up. <laughs> yeah, that's literally what it is. Yeah, and Ben. Yeah, I don't pl I don't play any fantasy oh, okay. uh, sports now. Uh, stupid question, then. I, <laughs> uh, uh, Jacob and uh, Jameson, you guys have both scored uh, many highlight real goals. Do any stand out to you? Um, I mean, I'd say Jameson stand out more to me than than my own goals, but uh, yeah. I'd say I think last year I scored a pretty nice goal against the Sioux in Sarnia. Uh, I think around the end of the year, I thought it was a pretty nice goal. So I think that's the, the biggest one that stands out. Um, for me, I would say that the biggest one in my OHL career that uh, stands out was uh, in my second year against Erie. But uh, I also had a couple nice ones this year, one against uh, Kingston and one also a shorthanded goal against the Sioux. Okay. And I find those online too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That clip's going there too. <laughs> hey Jacob and Jameson again what's your go-to celly if you guys have one um I usually just do the arrow just put it back and, and let it go I don't know I I'm, I'm a little simple with cellies but uh you know I might I have to work on it get Sam Bitten to show me a couple of his cellies <laughs> <laughs> um like Jacob I would say I'm a little bit even more simple than he is when it comes to celebrations I'm not a big celebration guy maybe I'll Give a little fist pump and hop into the glass, but usually uh, just straight to the boys. So, oh yeah, my my go-to after a goal is always the "you can't see me" <laughs> or the salute, and then you point at the coach to the other team. <laughs> my beer league team hates that. You yeah, gotta, don't teammates hate that. <laughs> you gotta be a nail gun for that one. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hey, Benny, you're such a stand-up guy, man. I love watching that uh, rock, paper, scissors on the bench with that kid while you were backing up. That was awesome, man. Yeah, he was uh, one of the guys on the team. It's actually his billet brother. Um, so I'd, I'd be over at their place quite a bit. So I got to know the family pretty well. 
uh, the kids are awesome. So it's just kind of able to connect to them and kind of keep them entertained. I mean, he'd offer me wings and hot dogs and popcorn throughout the game. Uh, I had to reject everything except for a few popcorn kernels one night, but, um, yeah, he's, it's an awesome family. So just to be able to kind of do that and share that with them and kind of give them a little moment for that for themselves, uh, just kind of awesome to be able to do that. Oh yeah. You made that kid's day. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, what have you guys been doing to keep yourself occupied? Any differences in your guys' training, working out? Yeah, um, I've, things just started to reopen here. So I've been working out four times a week and skating five times a week. So that I've been pretty entertained with that. And then uh, I've been golfing a little bit. I think, you know, it's, it's fun to just get into that and maybe get a, away a little bit from the hockey and uh, just, you know, spend time with some friends. Yeah, I'd have to agree with Jacob on that one. I mean, everything's starting to open up a little bit more here too. So um, I would say for the first couple of months, I was a little bit on my own. And I got some buddies that uh, have the same goals as me. So I was able to train with them. And, and it's always hard to be self-motivated to work out. So to have those guys around is definitely huge. Um, uh, but my gym, uh, my gym that I usually uh, go to opened up two weeks ago. So I've been there uh, five times a week, uh, past two weeks. Um, and for skating, uh, rinks opened up probably around two weeks ago as well. So I've uh, been on the ice basically as much as I can. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, I've been in a gym kind of working out, uh, like a home gym. And then uh, fortunate enough that my dad has like a gymnasium that I can use. So we've been kind of getting fully dressed in there, rollerblades, and just kind of tracking pucks and stuff. So better than nothing, but uh, definitely not what it used to be. So. I mean, the ice is starting to kind of open up here. So i um, heading down to Toronto, I think, in next weekend to work with my goalie coach uh, for the signing staying. And then I just got back uh, from some ice in Cambridge. So I'm starting to kind of get on the ice a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, it's been a little bit weird for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been weird for everybody. That's what everyone keeps saying as well. Definitely yeah. is. Uh, if the GM or scout were to ask, Jacob, Ben, what do you guys bring to the table? Um, I mean, I think uh, I have a pretty good release. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty fast. I can use my speed, uh, can make plays. I understand the game pretty well. Um, I'm good on the power play. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always willing to, to learn some new things and, and add to my game. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm just positionally correct. Um, like I've been told before, I just kind of, I'm good at making the save. So I got that natural kind of talent to be able to make a save. Um, and then just, uh, big like I work like to work hard. Um, that's one thing you got to be able to do. So just working hard and being a good team guy. Jameson, uh, we already touched base a little bit about your first camp with the Hurricanes. Uh, how did it go in your eyes? And uh, obviously, I think you got a big shot on possibly making the team this year. Um, yeah, I thought it went pretty well. Like I said before. Uh, the biggest thing for me and for my improvement is confidence. So to be able to get that development camp out of the way and, and get some experience at main camp as well was definitely huge. And uh, as I go back there this year or whenever it is and whatever happens, I think I'll be able to make a little bit more of a bigger impact and, and make a bigger name for myself. This one's for Jameson and Jacob as well. Uh, Jameson, you already been drafted, but Jacob, obviously you're getting a lot of phone calls from teams. Uh, have you guys had any weird questions? Um, not really. I think the, the weirdest questions are mostly during the, the questionnaires, but, uh, we're doing some zoom, zoom calls. Cause usually the interviews are at the, at the, t the combine and there's none of that this year. So, I mean, it's, it's just, you know, normal questions during the zoom calls, but besides that, like in the, the questionnaires, it's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, trick questions and, and a bunch of stuff like that. I probably asked you the weirdest questions. <laughs> um the combine has been canceled correct yeah yeah well, so yeah. With, with that obviously it's going to be a little bit different for jacob but uh as i went through it it was definitely uh definitely a struggle and definitely got some weird questions uh and uh been put in some weird situations with teams pulling up uh, some of my video and asking me what's going on in this clip when uh I'm definitely doing something that I shouldn't be doing. So, uh, but stuff like that. And I also got a question. Um, I can't put it word for word, but, uh, uh I think I got a question around the, the lines of, um, uh, 
if there was a snake outside this room that like like a killer snake with very venomous snake whatever uh who would you send out and uh there was a, an older guy in the room and a, and a big strong guy or and he was like would you send me because i've uh lived a long life and a long good life or would you send this guy because uh, he's strong or, or would you send yourself and, and hope for the best so uh definitely some some weird questions and some questions that you really got to think about but uh, at the end of the day i don't think it has a, a huge impact um because they're all right answers it just depends on how you think right yeah yeah absolutely yeah perfetti uh we had him on a couple nights ago and he came up with, uh, I guess the Kings had called him and they said, uh, so if we have a power play starting and Dowdy's on the power play and Kopitar's on the power play, where are you? And he got, he just got stumped. He's like, ah. And so finally, I think he answered and he just said, I'd just love to be on the ice. It wouldn't matter where I was, which is probably the right answer, even though there's lots of right answers. Well, that's definitely not a bad answer. I think they, they would have liked that for sure. Better than the bench. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jacob, how are you preparing yourself for the 2020 draft as a top prospect? Um, yeah, I mean, I've been working out a lot and just, uh, you know, I just try to, to wait for it to come. Obviously it got delayed a bit, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited for it to come and excited to see what happens during draft day. Hey, uh, guys, I just want to thank you guys all very much for coming on today. And, uh, we really appreciate it. We know all three of you guys are going to go far in hockey and we can't wait, wait to say that we had you on our podcast and, Cheer you guys on for the rest of your guys' careers. You guys are going far, and we can't wait. We're definitely fans from now on, and we have been for a little bit now, and uh, we're going to keep our eye on you. Watch you guys do good. Uh, yeah, thanks for having yeah. us. Definitely got a, I definitely got an order of Sting jersey now. Yeah. I heard the Reese jerseys are 50% off. Uh, yeah, they, they probably are. The 28, 20-year-old are, right? He's gone. Is this your last year? No. J He's got one J more year. He's 19. Right, He's right, 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 right. Uh, hi, my name is Jacob Pro, and I'm on I Only Touch Greatness podcast. That was a good one, too. Yeah. <laughs> hi, I'm James Reese, and I'm on the I Only Touch Greatness podcast. Woo! Woo! Hi, I'm Ben Goja. I'm on the I Only Touch Greatness podcast. Woo! Woo! Good Canadian kids. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Let's go, Thank guys. You.